Tonight on our news, protesters swarm Parliament today with a multitude of gripes. More from today's dramatic return to Parliament. Plus, politicians react tonight as the DRA seizes assets from an Abaco church. Also, the corruption case against an FNM MP heads to the Supreme Court. And the Queen still being remembered as the world prepares to say goodbye. and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. The House of Assembly had a dramatic return from the summer break this morning as police stood guard outside the doors of the House of Assembly after a crowd of demonstrators flooded Parliament Square protesting a number of issues. Marlena Leonard reports. <laughs> Police had to call in SWAT for support as the House of Assembly resumed following the summer break. Some in the crowd were protesting the proposed citizenship bill. Others seemed generally dissatisfied with the government as they flanked the steps of the House of Assembly while occupants and officials peered from behind curtains inside. We spoke to protesters to try to get clarification on what exactly it was they were protesting, with Faith Percenti telling us it's not about who organized the event. We don't hate anyone. All we're saying is that if you go into any other country, they ensure that their citizens are taken care of. Dave Horton, a healthcare worker, shared his views, saying his issue is not the idea of foreigners working in the Bahamas. I'm not going to be yet naive. We need foreigners in the country to help us in things we need to do. We, they have been helping us. But I'm going to say today, we don't need to instill where foreigners can have it better than Bahamian in their own home. But protesters found out the bill in question wouldn't be tabled today when the leader of the opposition, Michael Pintard, came over and spoke to the crowd briefly to mixed reactions. Now, while protesters initially started behind me, once the ministers started arriving, they moved to the front of the House of Assembly, and you can see there's now an increased police presence here. It was during a side interview with Pintard that the protesters breached the barriers and began to flood the square. Most protesters were peaceful, but there was a moment between police officers and a crowd member which led to the crowd being sent back across the street and the barriers being restored. Leader of the Coalition of Independence, Lincoln Bain, saying, We are here to tell them that no means no. If you want to pass a bill reference to citizenship, come back to the citizens. The House of Assembly has been suspended until September 28th. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks, Marlena. Well, days after Friendship Tabernacle Church on Abaco was searched by police and Disaster Reconstruction Authority resources were seized, State Minister Miles LaRota is unable to say if the supplies were taken illegally. This as a former Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis, is defending the local pastor. Berthony McDermott has the details. Our news caught up with State Minister in the office of the Prime Minister, Miles LaRota, following this morning's session of the House of Assembly. When questioned about the seized supplies, LaRota couldn't say if authorities suspect the supplies were stolen. I don't know um, I'm Reverend Mills to be a thief. I would not impugn somebody's character. However, a statement from the Disaster Reconstruction Authority says, last week, as part of our ongoing internal investigation emanating from our financial audit, the Royal Bahamas Police recovered several commercial assets of the Disaster Recovery Authority. Former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis quickly coming to the defense of Pastor Silbert Mills, confirming that approval was given under his administration for the resources to be stored there. But yes, supplies were, many supplies were sent there to accommodate, to accommodate people. They were doing an excellent job. Former North Abaco Member of Parliament Darren Henfield also defending Mills on Facebook saying, I really don't care what you do to me, but when you come for Bishop Silbert Mills, an outstanding community leader in Abaco, you come for me. Mills is also being defended by Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard. Murders are happening in the Bahamas, a whole series of, 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 of dastardly acts against children. And we have major officers talking to a pastor about generators. In a Facebook Live Tuesday, Mills lashed out, calling it a nasty attack on the church and a personal attack on him. I totally reject that, that argument. This government hasn't targeted uh, anybody. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. 
In other news, Free National Movement MP Adrian Gibson will stand trial in the Supreme Court on charges related to alleged corruption during his tenure as the executive chairman at the Water and Sewage Corporation. Prosecutors allege that Gibson benefited from contracts awarded by the corporation and he laundered money by buying real estate and vehicles for his rental company. Gibson and his alleged co-conspirators, Rache Gibson, who is his cousin, Jerome Missick, and campaign manager Joanne Knowles, were served with voluntary bills of indictments when they appeared before Magistrate Carolyn Voigt Evans today. They are due to be arraigned before Supreme Court Justice Bernard Turner on September 23rd. Peaches Farquharson and, Do and Elwood Don Donaldson Jr. received their voluntary bills of indictments on August 26th, and they will also be arraigned on the same date. The man who died on Junkanoo Beach on Sunday has been identified as 42-year-old Joshua Daniel McCoy from Kentucky. The American visitor died on Sunday after police say he complained of having difficulty breathing after 3 p.m., a bystander told our news on Sunday that McCoy was on the beach with his family when he died. And a man who died after allegedly committing suicide nearly two weeks ago has been identified by police as Kelly Lane resident Anthony Tilmay. The 41-year-old was found hanging from a tree on Kelly Lane off Johnson Road around 2.30 p.m. on September 1st. An investigation by police continues. Still to come on our news, women making waves in politics one year after the PLP's election win. Plus, parliamentarians pay tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II. And from books to backpacks, a civic organization gives back. That's coming up when our news returns. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest reigning monarch, will be laid to rest Monday, September 19th, in a state funeral televised around the world. Join RTV's Christina Dragovich and Jerome Sawyer and the R News team for live coverage of Her Majesty's funeral. Tune in for live reports from London and a look at the Queen's legacy in the Commonwealth and the Bahamas. Watch it live starting this Monday at 5 a.m., September 19th, only on the RTV network. Brought to you in part by Island Pay. Today, we are continuing our Women in Politics series leading up to the one-year anniversary of the Progressive Liberal Party being elected to office. Tonight, we focus on Senate President Lachelle Adderley. Our Sasha Lightborn sat down with her in her first one-on-one -on -one interview to talk about the year that was. Michelle Adderley was not elected as a member of parliament. She was appointed by Prime Minister Philip Davis to not only sit in the Senate, but also preside over proceedings. Her appointment, coupled with the appointment of Patricia DeVoe as House Speaker, marks the first time both chambers of parliament are headed by women. It's important that women are participating in politics, that there is representation, and that there is inclusivity in our parliaments. This means that women, when critical issues are facing this country, women are at the forefront driving. She's enjoyed sitting in the seat as president and spoke to many of the chamber's accomplishments. That one of my greatest accomplishments has in fact been to ensure that there is equality and there is a balance, a balance, a balance placed on presiding and sharing the various debates so that every voice is heard. And the Senate bodies place a strong emphasis on community outreach so that the community is aware of the Senate body, who we are, what we are doing, and the fact that we are engaged in making the lives of behaving people better. Utterly also not mincing words when it comes to a particular piece of legislation she describes as near and dear to her heart. I would be very pleased if we can pass the gender-based violence bill on an urgent basis. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. Well, for decades, the Progressive Liberal Party and the Free National Movement have dominated local politics. But the 2021 election saw new kids on the block, the Coalition of Independents, a new party attempting to make its mark. Our Jamila Missick sits down with the party's leader. Here's her report. 
What started out as an activist movement is now a political party. Leader of the Coalition of Independence, Lincoln Bain, says the move came after they were unhappy with politicians' performance. We started to reveal things about our natural resources and how Bahamians could benefit from it. And uh, we, uh, we tabled the document in the House of Assembly and we filed for commissions of inquiry. But it seemed that the politicians uh, were knocking it down. So we decided we have to go in the House uh, to fight for the Bahamian people. He says when the election was called, the coalition had only existed for five months, and for a young organization, he believes they did extremely well. 18 months later, he says the organization has more support than ever. We felt that there were some things that were very concerning to us that we want to clean up for the next election, like ballot boxes not being sealed, etc. And we had some protests as it relates to this. And for the naysayers who argue that there's only room for two political parties, Bain has this response. We see that the parties keep switching back and forth and we complain every time. So yeah, they're right. We've been swinging back and forth from one party to the next for the last 50 years. And the problem with that is, if you see that that isn't working, you got to try something different. Bain says the coalition intends to continue putting Bahamians first. We are going to continue to be the real opposition in this country, and that's an opposition to the government. Reporting for our news, I'm Jamila Misick. This morning's session of the House of Assembly was dedicated to the late Queen Elizabeth II as the Prime Minister and the leader of the official opposition gave condolences. Prime Minister Philip Davis says following the Queen's passing, he hopes relationships with the United Kingdom strengthen. King Charles was an early and vigorous proponent of the need to do something more and better to protect our environment. Prince William has followed his footsteps. They have both publicly stated their strong support for the work that we are doing here in the Bahamas. And I look forward to the further strengthening of relationship between our two countries, especially in this regard. Opposition leader Michael Pintard says the Queen will be regarded as one of the most influential individuals in the past two centuries. He adds the late Queen was very fond of the Bahamas. During her visits to the Bahamas, Queen Elizabeth would have met with all our political leaders and Bahamians from all walks of life. She had a particular regard for the people of the Bahamas, particularly young people. And many people across the world are still mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. With her eldest son, King Charles III, now at the helm, there has been debate on whether or not some countries will now move away from the monarchy and become a republic. In this report, a leader within the Anglican Church shares his views on the issue. Italia Hall reports. 56 countries are a part of the Commonwealth. King Charles III is the monarch of 14 of those countries. The very Reverend Dean and Rector at Christ Church Cathedral, Harry Bain, says, while Queen Elizabeth II has performed well in her role as queen, a number of countries are now moving away from the monarchy. They see it as being um, uh, archaic uh, and there's no need for it and the rest of it. Uh, and so there is a bit of uh, discussion still going on in that area as to whether to, whether to uh, retain it, to maintain it, uh, to keep it. Uh, or whether to uh, just uh, let it go and let's go on our own and become a republic. While Dean says he has a great deal of respect for the monarchy, he believes that the country is now in a different place. Monarchy is, is really just a symbolism uh, and, and its role and, uh, in the Commonwealth countries is not, uh, is not as uh, great as it uh, used to be. Okay? And so uh, moving to a republic, I think, is the way to go. That's my personal view. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. When our news comes back from the break, big benefits for customs and immigration workers, details of a new agreement revealed. All right, plus, Christina, coming up in Sports Point tonight, the UB Mingos taking a trip to Florida with some mixed results. We'll tell you how that all turned out. We'll also tell you how John Paul Jones and the Connecticut Sun, they find themselves on the verge of elimination. That's all coming up in sports. 
and back to school in style. A sorority gives back the details when our news returns. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest reigning monarch, will be laid to rest Monday, September 19th, in a state funeral televised around the world. Join RTV's Christina Dragovich and Jerome Sawyer and the R News team for live coverage of Her Majesty's funeral. Tune in for live reports from London and a look at the Queen's legacy in the Commonwealth and the Bahamas. Watch it live starting this Monday at 5 a.m., September 19th, only on the RTV network. Brought to you in part by Island Pay. This is our news. Welcome back. A new three-year industrial agreement was signed between the government and the Bahamas Customs Immigration and Allied Workers Union. Union President Sloan Smith says the agreement is worth more than $8 million and includes increments and benefits for hundreds of officers. While well, members will now receive dental and vision coverage, State Minister for the Public Service Pia Glover Rolls stressing the importance of the signing. We are ensuring that labor issues are addressed expeditiously. Of course, we have to take into consideration the fiscal climate of our nation, but we also have to take into consideration the importance of the workers of our nation, especially after coming out of a, a, a crisis in the pandemic and these same workers being on the front line, terming them essential workers. We had to make sure that that translates into the way that we take care of them. In terms of increases, in the first year, we're looking at at least one increment. Um, in terms of an increase, one increment plus a normal increment. And I'll tell you the value of those later. In the second year, they're offering two increments plus the normal increment. And in the third year, one increment plus the normal increment. Um, additionally, we have a, a small increase in the uniform allowance. Uh, it may not seem significant, but in the grand scheme of things, that accounts for a lot. In sports tonight, the UB Mingo's soccer team makes its first visit to Florida. Meanwhile, John Quill Jones and the Sun find themselves down 2-0 in the WNBA Finals. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks, Christina, and welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. The UB athletics program has been pretty busy so far this year. This past weekend, the men's soccer team taking a trip down to Florida where they were set to play a two-game set. Let's take a look and see how things went down. University of the Bahamas men's soccer team hitting South Florida for an anticipated two matches over this past weekend. First match against Atlanta University was canceled on Friday because of severe lightning in the area. But the match against Florida Palms University on Saturday was in 90 degree heat. Florida Palms University Owls came out strong against the Mingos. They scored in the 12th minute and then again in the 35th minute to end the half up 2-0. Mingos had more opportunities on goal early in the second half, but just could not find the back of the net. I also able to score three times quickly in the 55th, 63rd, and 69th minutes. Joshua Johnson was not going to let the squad go down, though in the 83rd minute he was able to connect, get the Mingos on the board. Final score was 5-1. to one. Assistant coach Alex Thompson said the team played well, considering many of them are freshmen and new to playing internationally. We have quite a few new players. This is the first time that they would have traveled and uh, played collegiately internationally. Um, we got some valuable experience and um, we're in the process of implementing a new playing style. And we saw where our strengths were and also the weaknesses. So we know what we need to work on going forward. On to some news from the WNBA where John Paul Jones and the Connecticut Sun, why well, they find themselves now on the bad end of a 2-0 series deficit on the edge of elimination. They uh, lost again last night, 85-71, game two of the WNBA Finals. And that means now when the series shifts back to Connecticut, it'll be do or die situation for Connecticut if they want to keep their season alive. John Quayle played pretty well, played 30 minutes in the game, 16 points, 11 rebounds, three assists. But as we mentioned, it would come in a losing cause. Game three of this series will come your way later on this week. We'll give you an idea of that one as again, they'll play on Thursday, do or die for the Connecticut Sun. And there it is, your check on sports for you here on this Hump Day Wednesday. I'm Marcellus Hall, back to you, Christina. 
Still ahead on our news tonight, a sorority gives back to a junior high school. That's coming up when our news returns. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest reigning monarch, will be laid to rest Monday, September 19th, in a state funeral televised around the world. Join RTV's Christina Dragovich and Jerome Sawyer and the R News team for live coverage of Her Majesty's funeral. Tune in for live reports from London and a look at the Queen's legacy in the Commonwealth and the Bahamas. Watch it live starting this Monday at 5 a.m., September 19th, only on the RTV network. Brought to you in part by Island Pay. Welcome back to our news. Members of the Theta Epsilon Zeta chapter of the Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated doing their part to give back to the community. The sorority adopted H.O. Nash Junior High School several years ago, donating school and other supplies every year. Members gathered at the school today to donate books, bags, pencils, and other items. The sorority's president, Anita Saunders, and second vice president, Don Rica Burrows, speak about the importance of giving back. It's an initiative that we've been doing for years where we are presenting back to school supplies to our adopted school, H.O. Nash. And this is something that, like I said, that we've been doing for several years, um, even through COVID. It is very important because there are always someone that's going to be in need. You know, we are all about service, you know, scholarship, sisterhood, final womanhood. So as it relates to our service, we must ensure that we are always giving back, always supporting, because at the end of the day, we are a sister's keeper. The school's president, Andre Nairn, welcomed the donation. This year we're delighted to have them uh, doing as they usually do, uh, bringing these supplies that are so um, needed by our students. You know, we have students from a variety of backgrounds and so, you know, anything to assist our students is, is, always, is always welcome. Great work in the community. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.